Good morning. Welcome to Swing the United Church of Christ. Well, let's go easy there. Let's go easy there. Welcome to everyone here with us this morning. Welcome to everyone watching either this morning on Facebook Live or later on today or later on in YouTube. You may or may not have noticed I am not Pastor Bush, nor am I Pastor Allen. Pastor Bush was called to Virginia uh, to be with his mother. Got a call from hospice, uh, lots of concerns there for his parents. And Pastor Allen is sick with some respiratory issues, so prayers for both of the pastors and the loved ones. To start off worship, I'm not sure if you were here with us last week or not. We want to review, we have uh, this prayer, Lord have mercy from Ukraine. It's in your bulletin, I forget where it's at in the actual bulletin. Page six in the bulletin. We'd like to say through this once just to practice it. And during the actual prayer today, we'll recite that three times through the prayers. We will pray, and we'll sing along. If we can speak. As we join together this morning, uh, joys and concerns, we have some listed. Prayers for strength and comfort for a friend of Joey Bush, who suddenly died by suicide on Tuesday. The son was married with two children and the family is devastated. From Carol Reith, requesting prayers for their dear friend Shane, who was operated on, on Tuesday and is to remove a brain tumor. It was a 12 hour procedure. Afterwards, he was resting comfortably. He has returned home and the results are still not known, so there's a lot of concerns there. Another prayer request or a praise report from Carol and David. David got his stitches out this week. Not sure if you noticed on the way in, he has two shoes on. <laughs> Huge. The plan, was, the plan I heard a month or two ago was two shoes before Easter. It's before Easter. Great job, Dave. Still the... Uh, uh, care as he gets better. Uh, we pray that he, we pray that the healing continues and he gets better every day. Prayers for Pastor Butch, for his mother who is on hospice, and for his father who also needs care, and for dear Pastor Butch and Sally. Prayers for Pastor Allen who is quite sick. Walk with him and help him feel better real soon. Also be with Pastor Allen's parents as they continue challenging medical circumstances. We also got a call on Friday. Betty Saltow is currently at Grandview Hospital with congestive heart failure. So we pray for, Be pray for Betty as well. Join me now as we pray our hearts and minds for worship. Please join me now in our call to worship. God's spirit is moving among us. Give thanks. Our God is about to do new things in our midst. How good it is to be chosen by God. We gather to sing our praises and thanks. God has done great things for us. We are glad. Now God is pointing us towards new goals. We are waiting to hear what God would have us do. We are ready to be faithful to God's call.
Let us pray. God of abundant love, open our hearts to your gifts. Free us from our fears and doubts. Give us generous hearts that we may pour out all that we have in service to you. Teach us to live with expectant joy as we anticipate your transforming grace. Amen. Let us join together responsibly, responsibly, responsibly and responsibly in the prayer of confession. Holy source of new life, you promise to set us free from paths of fear, doubt, and denial. Yet we resist your invitation to follow the path of Jesus, grasping instead for what we believe will offer security and safety. You call us to have faith in your sustaining presence and power, but your call takes us beyond anything we can see or touch. We fear placing our trust in things beyond our control. At times, we doubt that you can bring water to the dry places of our lives or replace our suffering with joy. Forgive, Forgive us when we turn, turn away from the peace of abundant life. Heal us and lead us home, Holy One. Whenever we seek to leave behind our old ways and turn to God for help, God forgives our faithlessness and strengthens us for the journey ahead. We are the heirs of God's promises. We are the children of God's compassion and mercy. We are forgiven. Amen. Though we live in a world full of upheaval and strife, division and hatred, may we demonstrate your love, your peace, and your light through our actions and by saying, the peace of Christ be with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. And those of you online, please comment or send an emoji. is in here. Let me spray a little bit for you. It is. It's perfume. And in our gospel lesson today in John, it's a story about a woman named Mary. She was the sister of Martha and Lazarus. And this is about her demonstration of love for Jesus. And you know what she did? She took her perfume and she poured it on her feet, on Jesus' feet, and wiped it with her hair. Now, I know that sounds a little odd to those of us in the 21st century, but that was a real outpouring of love because, you know, perfume was very expensive and it was very precious. So it was not something you gave away easily. And that was her way of sharing her love for Jesus. Now I'd like to share a poem and it's an old poem and it's called Sermons We See. And a part of it goes like this. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day 
I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. And the best of all the preachers are the ones who live their creed. For to see good put in action is what everybody needs. Does that make sense to you? Do you get that? You want to see how you are living out your faith. So in our gospel story today, we learn how Mary put her love for Jesus into action by pouring out her most precious possession onto the feet of Jesus. But do you know what? She was criticized for doing that. Judas, remember who Judas is? He would later betray Jesus in our story as we continue. And you know what he said? He said, we could have sold that perfume. We could have sold it and paid our wages for a year and given the money to the poor. But we find out that the truth is Judas, who kept the money bags for the disciples, was always one to take money for himself and not always give it to the poor. So here we have two people, Judas and Mary, one who talked about helping the poor while the other showed the importance of giving our best for Jesus. What will you do today and tomorrow and all the days ahead? You're going to choose talk or action. The choice is yours. Show your love for Jesus by your actions. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us demonstrate our love for you, Jesus, not in words, but by our actions. Help us to be the sermon that other people can see. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Good. Okay. This morning's epistle comes from uh, Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 4b. Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of, he of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the, sur because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus our Lord. For his, for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes from faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus.
thank you to the choir and to Steve and all those who are participating this morning. Our gospel lesson is from John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him, Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave me alone. She bought it so that I may keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. May God add a blessing to the reading of this holy word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Friday was an interesting day. It was uh, April 1st, a day which represents several significant anniversaries in my life. That date now represents 26 years since my mother passed away after a courageous fight with cancer. April 1st also represents 58 years since my cousin, Kathy, passed away. We were both six at the time. And lastly, April 1st marks my 26th anniversary of working in copier service with a local company. Yes, my mother died, and I started a new job on the very same day. The rest of Friday was interesting as well. After work, I was going to cardiac rehab, had my little sweatpants, my t-shirt on, I was all ready to go, only to find two local fire trucks in the parking lot. Rehab was not happening that day. Not sure what happened, but uh, I turned around and and, uh, went home. So I headed home with a stop at the grocery store, and it was there that when I came out of the store, I realized that Laurie had left me a message. And she said, would I consider offering the message this morning? Life does change very quickly sometimes, and it was indeed a very interesting Friday. I chose this morning the um, epistle as I felt more comfortable, I guess, talking about that than I did the gospel. Paul and I might have been having some kind of a relationship. It was his writings that were the foundation of my coming out sermon in October of 2020. The foundation for the most important sermon of my life was rooted in Philippians 4, 4 through 9. As somewhat like Paul, I wrote a letter to my congregation as Paul had written to the church at Philippi. Paul has resurfaced again this morning in chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. I'm fairly certain that Pastor Butch was going to preach on the Gospel of John. However, Philippians felt easier for me if there was any hope of having words on the paper. Paul was writing his letters to combat the opposition in Philippi. He understood how the Jews in Philippi felt as God's chosen people. It hadn't been that long as that he had been one of them, and so he lists the many ways that he had been an ideal Jew. He had done it all right circumcised on the eighth day, a pure-blooded citizen of Israel, and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a very highly regarded tribe of the 12 tribes. He was a Pharisee who diligently followed the law of the church, and because he took his faith so seriously, he condemned those who were following Christ. Quite an impressive resume. He checked all of the boxes. 
Paul's conversion when he encountered the risen Christ on the road to Damascus changed his life forever and persuaded him to throw his pedigree away. The very things that were once so important he now considered to be rubbish, even worse than what we would throw in the dumpster. Paul's all-consuming goal was to grow and mature in his faith and to be like Christ. What Paul used to think could be accomplished by his perfection, he now knew could only be achieved by his relationship with Christ. Having this kind of focus is depicted well in a devotion that I found in the uh, New English Version translation of the Women's Daily Devotional Bible. There are times in life when I think we all experience, experience what I call God moments. And Friday night, as I thought about what I was going to say this morning and grabbed every resource that I knew in my house, I turned to this Bible and happened to look at the Philippians verse, and by darn, there was a devotion for today based on this verse. So I took that as a God moment and um, decided to include it. This Bible has, I think, 365 devotions in it, all written by various authors, and this particular one is written by Amy Carroll, who describes herself as an ordinary woman. And it's entitled, Changing My Wanting, My Wanter, W-A-N-T-E-R. And she says, I sat there in shock. Surely that woman didn't say what I thought she said. My friend Lou Anne had just asked the Ecuadorian mother of seven about her greatest need, so that we could pray for her. The woman replied without hesitation, I want to be able to teach my children about Jesus so that they will follow the Lord all of their lives. Looking around her tiny three-room house, I could see lots of things she needed. She needed more beds so that every family member could sleep in clean comfort. She needed a refrigerator so that food would stay fresh. She needed carpet on the floor to keep the family's feet warm during the cold nights in the mountains. The reality was that even some of her most basic needs were not being met. Yet this mother knew the most important thing her family needed. She knew they all needed Jesus. She came first, he came first on her list for herself and for her children. Her physical surroundings may have been grim, but Jesus still came first. Amy says, I walked out of her house with tears in my eyes. I'm sorry to say I wondered what my response would be to the question, what is your greatest need, and how may I pray for you? I love the Lord, but sometimes he isn't at the top of my list of perceived needs. A woman with limited education but tremendous wisdom had reminded Amy of a great truth. She gave my wanter a major adjustment, and I walked out with something far greater than the bag of groceries that I had brought in. That story may make us all stop and think about our priorities. How important is our growing in faith in comparison to all the other things that get in the way? Paul stresses that we are not to sit on our past accomplishments. Biblical scholar William Barclay observes that Paul is saying that Christians must forget all that they have done and remember only what still needs to be done. He goes on to observe that in Christian life there is no room for a person or a church who desires to rest upon its laurels. At Zwingli United Church of Christ, we have had our share of accomplishments such as hosting the Interfaith Hospitality Network for many years. We've worked with Keystone Opportunity Center and have been honored by them. We've sponsored mission trips to Biloxi, Mississippi and to Philadelphia. We've partici- <clears throat> excuse me, we participate in the Bing Bag Project. We've sponsored and continue to sponsor scout troops. And I know there is a much bigger list than this and I could not just think of everything to write down, so fill in the blank of accomplishments that you know that Zwingli has done. But, as Paul and also William Barclay said, this is not enough. There is always more to be done. There is still so much that is wrong in the world. 
What are we going to try and do about it? These do not need to be huge, grandiose ideas. They can be something as simple as being a canteen volunteer for Keystone Miller Blood Bank. The bulletin continues to show the announcement has been there for several weeks appealing for volunteers. Doesn't sound like a difficult job, and it is distressing to read that much needed blood drives are canceled for lack of staff. As the earlier reference devotion talked about, the most important thing that a mother could do for her children was to teach them about Jesus. And here too, every week there's an announcement in the bulletin about a need for church school teachers for all of our classes. The reality is not everyone is available to help with these tasks that I just mentioned, but everyone can do something. What can we do to demonstrate to our children that we are still trying to make Christ a priority in our life? I like how Eugene Peterson in the translation, the message, reminds us that none of us have it all figured out. And he says, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out to me. Friends, he says, do not get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but he has his eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. We are called upon to keep moving forward in our relationship with Christ. How will each of us follow Jesus this week? Amen. Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in God, creator of heaven and earth, who is above all and through all and in all. We believe that God is still speaking and recreating, offering us life, and who promises to be with us in joyful times and difficult times. 
We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who embodied God's love and was the supreme example of how to live. He was crucified, died, and was buried, yet was raised to life so that all might have life. We believe that the Holy Spirit, though unseen, abides in us. It is through the Spirit that we live a spiritual life, and it is the Spirit that makes us into a church. We believe that God calls us to be the church, uniting us in a common faith and life. As the church, we are to be of one love and one heart, a people who are accepting and caring as God has cared for us. Amen. You may be seated. In Lent, as we are approaching the tomb and the sadness and look forward to the resurrection of life anew. Please help us to be more like Paul and draw our minds back to Christ, how he emptied himself for Christ's sake, and how his ultimate goal was now to follow the upward call of God to the end. Please be with all of the prayers in our hearts. The devastating loss of the son, husband, father, and the huge hole that is left. Prayers for Shane and his medical team as he recovers from brain surgery and help them all in this waiting time for the results. Prayers of thanks for the blessings of David's stitches being removed and continue to walk with him and help heal his foot. It's been a long journey. Prayers for Pastor Butch, his mother who is on hospice care, and for his father who also needs care, and for dear Pastor Butch and Sally. Help them all feel your love, comfort, and healing. Prayers for Pastor Allen as he's quite sick with respiratory issues. Walk with him and help him feel better soon. Be with Pastor Allen's parents as they continue challenging medical circumstances. Please be with Betty Saltow as she recovers from the recent heart incident. Help her get better soon. Dear Lord, please also be with the people of the Ukraine and the devastating life-changing times they are going through. Help to keep them safe, to find comfort for the families torn apart, and for the blessing of all the neighboring countries and people that are providing as they receive the refugees. Join me now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. Now is the time in our worship we prepare our offerings to give back what is rightfully His. Hopefully you have electronic fund transfer set up. If you don't, there's forms to do so in the back. Uh, mail a check into the office. Click donate on the, uh, on the website. 
Either way, let's return back to what is his. Gracious God, you have done great things for us. In the life and teaching of our son Jesus, you welcome us into your heart. Help us open our hearts to others that we may be ever more willing to offer our hospitality, our support, and our material resources wherever they are needed. Bless these offerings in your holy name, amen. It has come to that time in our service where we share the announcements that are in the bulletin. Please make sure that you read those carefully and if you are at all available, I know the Sunday school people need help, please reach out to them and sign up. All of those announcements are right here. Thank you. Thank you for the elders that were able to cover the service and the elders helpers that were able to cover the service. It was great comfort to 
Pastor Butch, let us hear Sue's message. Let us carry it forward this week as we approach the tomb. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 